In today's video, I melt down tin. I make minor improvements with metal parts. Also, I assemble tiny toolbox. I design new resin parts. I paint apples. And lastly, I try to mount Browning machine gun. Hello fellow modelers, I prepared exciting project, a tiny dragon wagon kit made by Academy in 72 scale. It also has a trailer, but in today's video I'm going to make only the truck. Dragon wagon is a lovely kit with a complex details molded from dark green plastic. It has a lot of parts which makes it exciting and enjoyable. However, I decided to make minor improvements to make the model more realistic and detailed. That means I use only from the kit chassis and the rest I will replace from metal parts. I have a matte old detail set made by Edart. It contains 4 metal sheets. It's going to be fun. I am cutting metal parts on plexiglass pad, because it's adequately solid and nicely flat. Perfect for bending metal parts is bender tool, but you can use a metal ruler and packaging knife as well. I typically use this technique for more significant parts. It is possible to glue the parts with a super glue or epoxy glue, but I need more stable solution, so soldering is the way. I am applying soldering liquid, which helps to thin stick to the brass. I looked at some tutorials about soldering metal parts and found that it's better to place soldering particles on the seam line and then try to melt them down only by heating the metal. The first try wasn't perfect, the second try was even worse, so I spread the tin with a soldering needle. Third time lucky, I raised the temperature a little. It requires some practice, but you can handle it relatively fast. I expected it would be much worse. There is a small amount of a tin on the seam line. You can easily remove it with a sandpaper or nail file. Also good practice is to roughen brass parts with a soft sandpaper. You will increase the color adhesion this way. I am cleaning excess soldering liquid with an extra thin glue and tin with an electric grinder. The result after finishing work is splendid, just for comparison before and after. I'm gluing small parts of uh, ordinary super glue because they are not mechanically stressed like the whole truck cabin. And the best thing is that if you applied more glue than you wanted, you can wipe them out with a super glue debonder, so the result is nicely clean. I showed you a large parts. Now the small ones. There are many holders, boxes and tools. Edar didn't forget details like door handles. You can make windows shields opened or closed. I want to make a diorama after the war, therefore the crew can safely drive with the shields opened.
the detail set is mind-blowing. It is far better than the plastic cabin from the kit, but also slightly more difficult. And this is still not the end. It has even more crazy details. You can assemble new toolbox that has details like tiny belts. The chassis has many pronounced ejector pin marks. I am filling them with a flexible super glue. The drive wheel with a chain is simplified in the kit, but hopefully you can modify it with the metal parts. I know it is still not perfect, and it would be better to design new parts in 3D and print them. I am bending around shape according to toothpick. It has precise diameter for the exhaust pipe. I am drilling out lights. I will create the lens from transparent resin later. The detail set has turnbuckles, but they are too flat, so I designed new parts in 3D and print them. Also, I made a new tiny chain for the crane. All the 3D parts are available for my patrons. I wouldn't say I like winding drum from the kit, therefore I replace it with a residual sprue and wind up new draw rope on it, which I made from spare conductors.
Ok, I have a chassis with a new details. I must admire that, it looks lovely. I also printed new Browning machine gun. I struggled to print fine details, so the rest I applied from detail set. If you are making the same kit, then be aware of one mistake. The draw bar is wrongly positioned, so you must cut out one end and rotate it 180 degrees. And with these details, I am done with the upgrades. It was exciting experience and I enjoyed it. Ok, I must admit that there is not a lot of plastic left, but on the other hand, look at the details. It is almost shame to paint it. If you made the metal rougher with a sandpaper, you don't need any metal primer or so. The black finishing surfacer is good enough. I cut out precise spring mask from transparent masking sheet. It is much more comfortable because you can see where you apply it and center the position. And I use ordinary cheap compass circle cutter for this purpose. I mix lighter green paint on the edges and raised sections. It'll make the model optically less uniform because one green shade is usually dull. The details on the rope are very soft, so I do not want more paint layers on it. I use Tamiya acrylic paints that can be cleaned with alcohol. So I am only removing the top paint layer. The paint on the wheels is properly dry, so I can make a nice weathering effect. I am painting random sketches of a Vallejo dark grass shade and also some sketches on the rubber with a black paint. The next step is to paint accumulated dust and mud on the tire pattern. I use for this purpose Tamiya enamel paint mixed with a thinner. And for more rough texture, a little bit of dry pigment. The result is quite messy. So, if you do not like it, you can wipe out excess paint with a enamel thinner. The next step is decals. I am spraying clear varnish for easier setting. I applied decals chemicals to make the star softer, but it didn't help a lot, so I sprayed over two layers of a clear varnish and then unified decals with a soft sandpaper. I'm making scratches and paint layers less uniform with a small amount of alcohol, which partially dilutes acrylic layer. The interior is dull. Let's improve it a little with some supplies. I use resin accessories made by Black Dog and some I printed. The box with the red apples is nice detail, primarily because I can use different paint than green. And more accumulated dust with a highly diluted acrylic Vallejo paint.
I expected that the details in the interior would be more visible. Never mind. Last but not least, more weathering. I am creating sketches on the sharp edges and randomly across the whole surface. I am painting more stains of a light green acrylic paint. The advantage of acrylic paints is drying time and nice smooth result. However, you cannot wipe it out if you overdone this effect. The last weathering step is matte splatters. I use enamel paint for this technique because you can remove unwanted splatters with a enamel thinner. And for accumulated matte texture, dry pigment. You can apply it when the enamel paint is still fresh. It works like a glue. The dots are across the whole surface, but no problem for enamel thinner. This time I cannot forget to paint Vaseline on the fifth wheel. I use enamel black gloss paint with a mix of black pigment. I'm making new lens from two component epoxy party. It looks so cool and detailed. Only some scratches vanished after all the shading, so I must decorate some. I look at the documentation and realize that I forgot to include some wires and pipes. 
I use lead wires which are nicely soft and easily shaped. While editing this video, I realized I had forgotten one small detail, and that is windshields and wipers. It was quite tough because the interior was hardly accessible, but I somehow handled it. And with the steps, I'm done. It is my most detailed AV model so far. Even so, I missed some details in the process, but for the 72 scale, I think it is not the worst. Also, I have a trailer and capture German cargo in the schedule, but you can send me a comment with the idea what you like to see on it. So that is all, thank you for watching and see you next time. Behold the dragon.